2012 Pinot Gris. It's 100% Pinot Gris and uh, shows some really nice bright fruit. Anxious to try this. Mikey, what do you got there? Nice. Yeah, it's yeah, got good, some good acid. Good first course wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 12 is a good vintage for us, uh, for all the Oregon Valley. So it's got just enough little acid there to work with with the food. It should make it. Uh, How do you guys, um, is, it, is there oak in here? Or? No oak, so it's all steel. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Which keeps it real bright and fresh. Yeah, it does, absolutely. And what about the, what about the soil? Uh, the soil composition, James? That, so that vineyard. This, the 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 Pinot Gris that we use to make the grapes that we use to make this Pinot Gris comes from our two vineyards. Our older vineyard planted in the early '70s, and the other one planted about 10 years ago. And the soil is more volcanic and rocky, very typical of what you see in Burgundy, France. That's why Pinot Noir does so well, Pinot Gris does so well uh, in Oregon. So it's very rocky. Um, the, the vines are stressed considerably because the soil doesn't hold much water. So it takes quite a few years to get the vines up to produce the fruit, but once they do, we get some really nice small berries with concentrated fruit. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's almost always you can taste that Oregon wine. It's that, just the rocky, you know, minerally flavors. Um, but you know, I was just trying to think of, of seasonal stuff that we're going to have available to us in May, and um, I was hoping that this might work with strawberries, uh, considering the you know the Ponchatoula strawberries being full swing, mm -hmm. which I think is a definite possibility if we taste that in a little while. Or we can kind of go the opposite, uh, rather than trying to you know complement the wine directly. Um, if we put something a bit heavier, and there's enough acid to cut into something with some fat, so we went more of a route with a uh, faux gras or something like that. So you know you can kind of go two ways: either try to complement it you know side by side, or almost find a polar opposite that that acid can kind of cut into and. and Complement it that way, but um, you know, I got a couple things in the kitchen. A little later, I can whip up and we can taste them side by side. Great. All right. Well, I went back to the kitchen and I whipped up a couple of dishes that I'd been working on previously, and I'm going to see how they work with the wines. Uh, with this Pinot Grigio, I was thinking of going two different directions. We can either go a heavier direction and let the wine cut through some more rich flavors, or we can try to complement some of the lighter notes in the wine with some kind of fresher, cleaner flavor. So. Uh, the first one I want to try is a uh, little slider made with bluefin toro and uh, it's got stuck in the middle of it a chunk of faux gras. So a real rich fatty slider uh, but I'm thinking that cleanness of the wine can cut right into all that fat. Or uh, take some local strawberries. I got a little Mexican crumbling cheese and it's dressed real lightly with a little verjou uh, which is just basically an unfermented wine and a little bit of uh, watercress and balsamic reduction. So, go ahead and give these both a taste and see which one I like better. Wow. Both very good, but we got a clear winner. The, um, Cheese, a little saltiness in the cheese, the sweetness from the strawberries, that very light verjus dressing, and, and just the nice uh, herbaceousness of that of that watercress brings out some great flavors in the wine. Uh, this should be something very similar to what I think I'm in.